Hello, everybody. This is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where five minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today, we're going to talk about why we need a magisterium. Now, before we begin, let's start with a prayer. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filii et Spiritui Sancto. Secutor in principio et nuc et semper et seculi seculorum. Amen. All right, so I recommend one of the episodes you watch or one of the early ones I did on the three pillars of Catholic apologetics, which is sacred oral tradition, the Bible, and magisterium. So if you're not familiar with the magisterium, magisterium is essentially the teaching authority of the church. It's the one binding authoritative teaching authority of the church. Now, why do we need a magisterium? Well, because the Bible didn't just manifest itself. It didn't fall out of the sky when Christ ascended at the end of Matthew. He said, baptize and preach and teach. He didn't pass out Gideon Bibles and put them in every hotel room at the time. No. So the Bible was never meant to be the authoritative handbook for Christian living. It's authoritative in its own way, but you have to take everything in context and see through the prism of sacred oral tradition and magisterium. But in itself, it's ne Christ never said it. And we have episodes here on Sola Scriptura, two or three. Christ never said, all you need for a Christian living is this Bible. Because first of all, the New Testament didn't exist. And he didn't say that about the Old Testament. So why do you need a magisterium? A good example of this is the last gospel. Read John 1 and the first 11 verses. First, first chapter of John. In the beginning there was a word and the word was made flesh. Yeah, that, that whole thing. That's confusing. That's confusing, right? It's, it, it has some Trinity stuff, clearly, but it's confusing. So you can have Church A down the street interpret the last gospel one way. You can have Church B down the street interpret it another one. You can have Church C down the street interpret it another way. Who's interpreting it right? And this is the problem with denominationalism. We have 33,000 denominations in the United States all of them believing that they have the true authority, which they don't because the only, the only church that has true authority is the church that Jesus Christ founded, but they believe they have the true authority in the true proper interpretation of Scripture. This is why you need a magisterium, because a magisterium is protected by the Holy Spirit, and the magisterium is the one that properly determines and defines and interprets what, let's say in this example, the last gospel means. And so you see this, and we have the playlist on the ecumenical councils. You see the first time this really fleshed out, the Council of Jerusalem, around 50 AD. We have an episode on that. When the apostles, all of which are still alive at this point, are discussing, do new Gentile converts need to be circumcised and observe Mosaic Law, Mosaic law and all these things? They came together under the auspice and protection of the Holy Spirit and said no. You look later on, Council of Nicaea. The same thing. So anytime there needs to be discussion, they meet and they come up with one defining interpretation and everyone sticks to that. And we know that's the true interpretation because the Holy Spirit protects the magisterium. You see it in the Gospel of John where, John, where, where Christ says the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. You see it at Pentecost. You see it where Jesus breathes on the apostles and gives them the ability to forgive sins. So the Holy Spirit protects errancy. And we have an episode here on papal infallibility. We have an episode here on the primacy of Peter as seen in the Acts of the Apostles. But on faith and morals, the Pope can't be wrong. Or ecumenical councils that are properly done can't be wrong either. This is why you need a magisterium. Because the magisterium is the teaching authority that says, yes, you could have 10 different interpretations, but only one is right, the one that is interpreted by the Catholic Church, because the Catholic Church was given the power by Jesus to interpret things. You see this played out in Scripture. Jesus says, whatever you bind is bound. Whoever hears you, hears me. We've talked about in the treatment with every epistle we've done with Peter. Peter, I'm sorry, with Paul and Paul's epistles. Paul gives the tools and fleshes out the tools. And you see Jesus do this as well in the Gospels. The tools of excommunication. You see early ecclesiology in the New Testament, in the epistles. So you see the, you know, say in pretty much every epistle is watch out for false prophets. right? And he says, protect the traditions that we have. 
essentially maintain orthodoxy. Watch out for false prophets that teach heterodox teachings. See, all of this is in there because it was understood in the nascent church that there was one interpretation that was the right interpretation. Not the Judaizers that you see Paul talk about in the Galatians and not later on in it with tons of different heretical sects in the first 200, 300 years. They're heterodox. There's one teaching and that you need to stick to it. And Peter and Paul and John in their epistles all say the same thing. Stick to this view. And what was this view? It was the view that was handed down through apostolic succession to the disciples of the apostles, to the disciples of the disciples of the disciples. This is why I do a lot of episodes in the early Catholic saints, because they got their training, like a polycarp, he was a, a disciple of John, from the apostles or the disciples of the apostles. So there's one homogenous, orthodox view of everything as defined and protected by the magisterium, which is the teaching authority of the church, whether it be in 64 AD, like you see it played on the epistles, or whether it be in 2021 AD. You can't have too many cooks in the kitchen, like in the military. There's a chain of command. It's the same thing here. There needs to be one defining authority. If not, you have schism and chaos, what you have today with denominationalism. Guy, post in the comments. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Please hit the notification, subscribe, and share button, share with like-minded people. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray.